You live, pal? Oh yeah! We're here on the morning drive. It's ten paces streaming to you live. Travis is You got. You got Bagman the Pounce. Bagman the Pounce. That's me. Bagman and the Pounce. Oh. Uh, <laughs> there was one person. I was like, I'll be that one. No, we're the Pounce. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Bagman the Pounce and Scrumble. Scrumble. Oh, Scrumble couldn't make it, man. No, like, where the Pounce? Can, uh... Scrumble's not here. Scrumbles. Uh, you can please. assign yourself these characters. <laughs> Tag yourself. I'm Scrumble. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> I'm never gonna. I never get to be Scrumble. Yeah. There's that um TikTok Little song brother about rules. Overwatch, right? Mm hmm. I want to be Scrumble. <laughs> the Scrumble controversy. Oh, like the Ramones song? Yeah. Yeah. 2020, 24 hours ago. I'm already Tracer. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. It's Monday. It's 8 p.m. Central. It's 10 paces. As always. We hope we've, we're finding you well. And if not, let's turn that frown upside down. Not literally, or that would hurt. Or we will find you. Yes. Or literally. Uh, send us photos of you literally turning your frown upside down. Yeah. It's pretty impressive, to be honest. I have never found it impressive, and I think everyone needs to stop doing it. No, it's the latest TikTok trend. That's, well, I mean, that's, that's, my, that's my issue with it. Can you think of a better trend to replace it? Yeah, uh, lip-syncing to popular current music. I don't like it. <laughs> oh, whoa! You just blew my fucking gourd, man. I guess I'm just not yeah, hit. Yeah, I've blown a lot of things today. <laughs> well, let's try not to blow it blown tonight. Blown a lot of top 40 charts. Yeah. Billy Jean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't do my warm ups, so I wasn't prepared. Your vocal warm ups? <laughs> yeah, me, me, me. Tried to match, you can, you tried can, to match the King of Pop. You can pop do them right now. Raw dog in it. Do them right now if you want. Nope. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> fair. We'll just go on. That ain't my scene, dog. Not with that attitude. Mm hmm. And I intend to keep the attitude, so. Mm hmm. Okay. <laughs> Well, Travis, I heard from a little someone named Travis. It's some someone else's birthday today. Well, Travis, I think that's a reliable resource. Um, yeah, you know him. He's been on the show before. It's Joe's birthday, everybody. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah, applaud. That's right, old steady hand Stedlin himself. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I was trying to do whatever. I really thought you were going to do operation board. I thought you were going for all you. Are you ready for this? <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> it was meant to be like the air horn, you know. Yeah, which we have. No, oh, somebody do it, jo Joe. There Amazing. we go. Every time. That's the secret word for the day. Every time someone says Joe. Well. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> delay. <laughs> Will happen. Yeah. I mixed up the horn. Yeah. Oops. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, uh, we're making our special man a birthday card. Ooh, that should be fun. Do we'll you, see. Do you know what <laughs> what kind of colors he likes? What um, are the parameters? Yeah. I don't know. Are we establishing parameters here? 
Yeah, lay out some lay out some details. I know he likes hard inks and green. Cold drinks, come on. <laughs> hard inks and green drinks. <laughs> that sounds you know, I've been funny. watching a lot of the later seasons of Always Sunny lately, and uh, that sounds like something they would do in, in, uh, in the later seasons in particular. <laughs> green drinks, like... Like, uh, because Frank's only eating blue at one point in the later seasons. <laughs> Why is he only eating it's blue? It's just his favorite flavor. Oh, okay. Yeah, they were, they were like, you can't eat, you can't, what is blue? You can't taste blue. Yeah. I disagree. <laughs> it's a, it's a flavor it's only cool available. Cool blue or blue raspberry. Yeah, or, um, Glacial. Hawaiian Punch is like... Uh, the blue one is like citrus. It's the weirdest thing. Like blue, blue uh, citrus out. Yeah. Mm, I suppose that makes sense. Yeah, that's probably why too. Indoctrinate him. Indoctr. Uh, uh, who? <laughs> when? I'm willing to do it. But I, I, I just need turned to onto the the idea of blue being citrus flavored. Oh, oh okay. I thought it was a command. I'm always open to commands. <laughs> <laughs> Says a lot about you. It doesn't say anything. But it was... <laughs> I gotta try another sleeper cell word. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not storm the capital. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of effects to that. Oh, one. we got them. Uh oh. Do I need to go to jail? Yes, this is a bit unfocused, even even for us. I think it is. Well, I mean, you can you can start in this card whenever you want. Yeah, let's start working on this card. Okay. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think well, we needed a formal three two one draw, but if you want one, three two one draw. Whoa. Well, you were leading into something I thought about. <laughs> Favorite colors? And... Oh, see, I, I I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think may, you know Joe might. If it, just try to guess at what Joe's favorite dinosaur is. I guess include that somehow. Dinosaurus Rex. You see, I think I know exactly what Joe's favorite dinosaur is. Well, here we go. See, was I right? Was it Cheesy Saurus Rex? No. No. I don't know this Joe person, but that is a demerit in my book. <laughs> Their favorite dinosaur is the Dizzysaurus <laughs> rats. What do you what do you like? Because all the dinosaur bones were lies planted by the devil. <laughs> well, it's not even that so much. It's just like I guess if if you wanted to do the one from way back, that would be fine too. But if you're gonna if you're gonna try to sell me on some shit where this dinosaur doesn't even dance, we're gonna have a bone to pick uh, in real life oh. and not pick devil ones. <laughs> so we're back or cheesy source rex or you're on my shit list is all i'm trying to say i don't know what about radical 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 rex mm. yeah i didn't think about jim henson's dinosaurs i'll accept any of those too what about rex from toy story uh that's a toy it's not a dinosaur. he can be your favorite toy Based off a real dinosaur, though. Uh, there is not a single real-life dinosaur bit that uh, sounds like Wallace Shawn. You don't not know? Even, not even any of the Were you ones. alive then? Was I alive when Wallace Shawn was alive? Yes. If you, made a, if you made a casting of a raptor skull, you're telling me it wouldn't sound inconceivable? You blow into it, and it's like, are we getting replaced? <laughs> <laughs> You absolute fool! <laughs> he's a uh, he's like mid school mid evolution. Principal of source. <laughs> he does have school principal energy for sure. Specifically because of the goofy movie. Oh well, yeah, that is true. But it was good casting because he he's always had that energy. <laughs> Even um even his 
I mean, that's the, that's sort of the joke of the the movie. But even his evil uh, mercenary in Princess Bride is very bureaucratic, you know, and uh, nitpicky. Isaac? Yeah. No. Yeah. Fezzik. Fezzik was on the Andre the Giant. No. No. Yes? No. <laughs> yes. Maybe. I didn't say Fezzik, did I? <laughs> I said Fezzik. Oh, I see. <laughs> no wonder I was so confused. Travis. That's me. What do you look for in a, uh, a good, a good card? I think, I, I would say a message. What sort of message do you want on the inside of this card? Do you want it to be Get something, well something heartfelt? He's not dying. Isn't he? I mean, do you want like the inside not of the card? Not any faster they... than any, any of the rest of us. I don't know about that. Did he take his vitamins today? Oh. Some of us took our vitamins today and are dying Flintstones slowly. a day. Yeah, Flintstones a day keeps the Reaper away. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could work. I, it is hoping it that... It is, you know. I mean, Joe's pretty... You get well soon. Joe's Stop pretty old. Sucking. No, no, make sure you take your vitamins. Oh. Yeah, yeah that's not a fair point. I mean, that's, that's uh, not a bad point. I do have an idea in mind, okay. but... I do want some direction to go. Do I uh, do I go with a sillier pun or do I go with a darker pun or not even pun, just a darker message? I think Joe's getting up there in age, and uh, he'll appreciate the darker me message. I think Joe's message. getting up there in age and won't be able to comprehend the deeper themes of the darker message. And you, for his demented mind, should go for <laughs> the sillier pun. Maybe in parentheses, just All right. explain. Seems like we're one to one. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like Aaron's idea. In parentheses, you see, because you're going to die one day. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, put put it in like the, uh, you know, like postscript. It's like just for Alzheimer's. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well. One thing I know is that Joe is gonna see the card, mm -hmm. so that's something to think about. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Oh, okay. They could be busy. If it's a vo if if it's a voodoo situation Ooh. where like it's just the sentiment being put into the universe, then hey, you know, cut loose. <laughs> I mean, it's really up to him whether or not he sees it. Yeah. Be the silliness you want to see in the universe. Oh yeah, but he's, if he's meant to see it, you have to... You have to think about that. Yeah, and see, I... I feel like he'll appreciate the message either way. Oh. Well, then you just gotta go for the one that you have a better drawing idea for. Drawing's gonna be the same either way. It's oh. the uh, text the on the card that'll change. I see. Well, well, what are your options then? Why don't you hit us with your your text in in sort of a, a verbal what's it, form. raw form? Yeah, bounce it off. So I don't know if it's clear yet, but I'm drawing Swamp Thing, Alan okay. Moore's Swamp Thing, because that's Joe's favorite comic book character and his favorite dinosaur. Whoa. Swamp Thing's, a Swamp Thing's not a dinosaur. He wasn't invented by the devil. He was invented by Alan Moore. <laughs> Who is the devil? No, Alan Moore just serves the devil. Don't be stupid. Well, then... You know, he, he would uh, also... Alan Moore is the second coming of the devil. It's trickle down. And we all know that... Now, uh, children... Go. Parents have your children leave the room here, but we all know that the devil has had more than one coming up to this point. <laughs> Oh, the devil loves to come. Yeah. So Alan Moore can't be the second. <laughs> <laughs> like the sixth? I just don't buy it. The 666th coming Whoa. of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how he wrote Watchmen so good. The Cumber of the Beasts. 
<laughs> you see that splatter? Satan was here. <laughs> That's how it is in a lot of fantasy. And they look up to me, and I look back down at them and say, "Did you robot voice?" Yep. <laughs> Maybe. It sounded on purpose because it just went mount. <laughs> <For me. laughs> Yeah, it saved me for my own joke. That's fine. You Actually, can you can clip it I, and then just put a new one in for the short. I had a really funny weed Are Rorschach joke that I was all by myself. Uh huh. So I just I just laughed and laughed and laughed in an empty room. But uh, it was it was that same line, but it was after I'd been like talking about how sucky the city was. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, and the city looks up to me and asks for greens. And I look down at them and say, no. <laughs> it's a funny... It's a funny thing to parody. Yeah. It's, it's so edgy, you know. Why don't they make Which another is... Watchmen? Uh... They have more than once. They did an HBO show another, another just one. now. Like, while we're streaming? Yeah, while we were streaming, they released an entire HBO show. <laughs> Speaking of, <clears throat> well, we can't talk too much about it, because I don't think you've seen it. Um, but the new Scott Pilgrim came out. Yes. Yeah, I haven't seen it still. It looks really good. People are really I've excited about it. I've watched it twice. I expect to yeah, we're probably gonna watch Scott it. Scott Pilgrim is so just so powerfully formative for me, and this is a a nice new take on the property. Yeah, it's not a retelling, really. Like it's well, it's not a uh, a remake, which is interesting. Yeah. Which I think is the absolute best way to go with it, because we seen and watched the story yeah. play out already. Yep, it's like how uh, people get tired of seeing the Spider-Man origin as good as it is. Like, oh my god, how many times can we watch uh, that? Yeah, I mean, now we skip it every time. Like, there there, there have been enough Spider-Man that have yep. skipped the origin that there are more now in film and, and in, like, television that really? didn't wow. do the origin story than did. But that's guess, just because we we saw the origin story a bunch of times in a row. Yeah, I guess I mm. got washed out on it, and I was just like, because ah. we got Raimi short break, bad Amazing Spider Man short break, a Tom Holland Spider Man. Yeah, Tom Holland skipped it. Mm hmm. And um, well, that's true. But Amazing and uh, and Raimi did it, and uh, and the, then everything surrounding those, everything else has skipped it. Yeah, completely. Like, I have literally never, in all of my time as a comic book fan who, like, seeks out and consumes general comic media, I've literally never seen Miles get his powers. Not once. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't like the Ultimate Marvel Universe at all, and so I didn't bother with, with, the, with Miles before when he was in a different universe. And then hmm. uh, after they merged him, he already had powers. Uh, I wasn't going to buy a full-price DLC game for the PS5 of the game I had not yet beat of the first Spider-Man game, so I never played that one. And uh, I don't think Spider-Man 2 is as good, and I think it's because of whoever's writing the Miles game. So <laughs> I'm probably never going to play it. That's fair. Um, Spider-Verse was awesome, but I don't think he gets his powers in that, does he? Uh, in the... In Into the Spider-Verse, he does. Oh, okay. Then I have. Then I have. I've seen Spider Verse, the first one. I haven't seen the second one. I don't know if they montage it. It's been a minute. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I know it wasn't like, oh, poor Peter Parker. I mean, I mean, poor Miles Morales is a just a mild mannered kid. You know, we never saw any of that. Well, I mean, we see a lot of his familial drama because that's like a huge part of his character. Oh, no, 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 it's a part of everybody's uh, Spider Man. Every Spider Man's character. I just mean that. Um, we never see pre-Spider-Man Miles. Yeah. Um, and that may be just a general thing because he is, no matter what you know, no matter what you do with the character, he is one that is based on someone else. He exists in context in the context of someone else. It's like um, fan fiction in a way. It's like Waluigi. 
<laughs> yes, Waluigi existing in context of someone who exists in context of someone else. Actually, he's in a kind of triangle because he is, uh, he is of course, a dark mirror of Luigi and a normal mirror of Wario. Yeah, but he just shows up for sports. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure you've probably heard, but maybe you haven't. The uh, some, Somebody high up at Nintendo was like, we don't use him because he's an unappealing character. Yeah, just like oh, Wario. Too bad. We're like, we really feel like a lot of games were you to add Waluigi to them, it would harm their appeal. <laughs> <laughs> you know That's how really what they've said. You guys are, uh... <laughs> Not entirely wrong, I guess. Especially some of their cuter stuff. You I could, think they're just but, waiting for another flop because they know that people want it and they're like, we're just going to store this one in the back pocket for oh, I'm, I'm confident the next they don't Wii U debacle. Want it. Like, I, I'm sure they're just waiting out a meme storm. I don't think they think anybody actually wants a Waluigi game. I'd play a Waluigi game, like a Wario No, I, I do want one. I'm not kidding. But uh, I think a lot of people are kidding and I think they think everyone is kidding. I disagree. I think they're like there are certain things that they've been kind of putting in their back pocket that the fans have wanted forever. Like more recently with the uh, Super Mario RPG remake. Mm -hmm. I think they they kind of stow these things away if they have kind of a slower spell and they're like, well, we know what they want. Um, we can tuck this away while we work on the things we want to work on. And then, mm -hmm. you know, deliver them in times of, you know, in slow times. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I think that gives them more credit than I uh, believe they deserve in terms of sort of the reasoning. Like, I, the, the time to have released, for example, Mother 3 has passed. Like, people are less excited about a Mother 3 release now than they would have been 10 years ago, I think. But yeah. just think about how stoked your particular circle of people is going to get whenever. <laughs> oh, no, no. I mean, I understand. I understand that. I think they're honestly just. I think Nintendo has the tendency to go. That is a property that we don't really get and to sideline it. Yeah. They certainly like to focus on their their main lines, but they've owed up considerably. And they've been going through mm -hmm. some radical changes. Because I know um, um, that's why Retro Studio ended up making Metroid Prime. Is Miyazaki was like, I don't know what to do with Metroid, man. Yeah, I don't know. You guys do it. Yeah, so he was like, look, we should make a Metroid game. People like this, but I don't need to be that involved. Look, I was involved in the first one. I'm glad it, it worked, but. Are there any uh, Nintendo properties like that? Forces yeah. that, that that Metroid would like spacefaring sci-fi stuff that uh, Miyamoto doesn't seem to have any interest in at all. Well, they didn't know what a bounty hunter was. Really? Yeah, they they. Uh... Retro kept trying to come out, or it was either Retro or uh, uh, Team Ninja, but they were trying mm. to um, come out with Samus being more like a bounty hunter, and Nintendo kept, you know, saying, no, that's not right. And eventually they're like, what do you think a bounty hunter is? And they were like, you know, a, a, a female hero that goes around saving people and <laughs> killing it. They're like, no, that's... They go looking for bounties. <laughs> yeah. Ba they go looking for bounteous uh, opportunities to heal yeah, the world. Yeah, bountiful... Bountiful pleasures. That's interesting. Um, that's definitely, like, weird that they said, No, they're not a bounty hunter. <laughs> not like... Like, I would have thought the reason they used the word was probably because of Boba Fett, but he was clearly a bounty hunter. Not doubting your story, it's just strange. Yeah, yeah. I'm just uh, trying to read up on it more. But, you know, Miyamoto, like, 
clearly he's he's into the more serene, somewhat ghibli leaning creative side. And so you see stuff that is less like that uh, get shafted from time to time because he's like the very talented big name in their studio, you know? Yeah. I mean, they weren't great. I, I don't. I don't believe they were great to the mother guy, for example, because I don't think they've ever been a big fan of how like weirdly dark the series is and stuff. I really know nothing about why the the trials of the mother series. Oh, I know that. Um, Aside they, from they, sixty-four, they didn't keep the guy. Yeah, I, like, I, they weren't I, interested in keeping him on the staff, even when they even even if they never did mother again, they were also done with the man who makes mother. He's hard to work with. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, clearly they don't entirely see eye to eye because if you look at interviews with him, he's like, I don't know, man. Yeah, he doesn't. They asked me to make three. I made three. Um, Kamiya recently mm -hmm. uh, left Platinum. Yeah. And uh, people keep telling him like it'd be really cool if you worked with Kojima or someone like that, and he just went out and said that would not work. We are too. When when you put two very uh, niche creatives together, they also said like uh, Yoko Taro, the near guy. Mm -hmm. um, he was like, we would butt heads too much. Yeah, that's often yeah. the case. It wouldn't be productive, but I mean, I'm sure eventually they can come up with something cool, but not in any way a like development cycle ready game. Yeah, yeah. You well, the thing is. I, I think it, it it depends, but I think Kamiya knows that he's uh, hard to work with, not not easy to work with. Like, just because we, I mean, we've seen him like on Twitter and stuff. Like, there are people who hate him just because of the way he interpersonally he is them? online. Yeah. Well, I mean, before did a whole video about that that actually yeah, starred Kamiya. Speed but, running, uh, getting obviously blocked. that attitude and <laughs> like. And having left so many companies as after being the creative lead in series, like I don't get the impression he and Kojima would get along just because they would they've both been too much for somebody who they make millions for before. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Um, sometimes you want to throw sodium in a tub of water. I mean, it's true, and like they'd probably make something good. Um, neither of them is going to go, you can't do that, that's too silly, sir. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and that is one of the things people like about them, is their willingness to go big. Okay, you can do that, but we're gonna have an hour-long cutscene explaining why it's relevant. At the end of the game. Oh yeah, man, if you're not, if you're not there for the cutscenes, uh, you, got, you got a different series to play. Yeah, you should not be <laughs> playing a Kojima game. <laughs> I, because it's it's just funny because we played three, and I remember the first thing I liked was, man, this cutscene's been going on for a long time, and then they started using the real world history footage, and I was like, oh, this is a really cool game. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you see the Soviets are in this area because blah blah blah, and I'm like, wow. I'm learning. I'm learning. Edutainment. Like, uh, Metal Gear Solid Five takes place in the Afghanistan conflict. That was like a proxy thing with Russia. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, Desert Storm. I didn't have enough. Or Iran Contra. Uh, oh, five. Sorry. Yeah. Jumped from three to five. Yeah, th uh, three was in the seventies. Or six. Yes, three was during the Cold War. You were in Stalingrad, I believe. Not Stalingrad. Groznygrad. Yeah. Which was one of the... When Russia still held tropical locations in the USSR. <laughs> All I knew was David Bowie was heavily featured. I never actually played it. Oh, I was talking about 3 again when I said that. But yeah, 5... Uh, <laughs> five <laughs> fives, fives... We're jumping timelines here, homie. Five song actually is a famous David Bowie song, but it's not my David Bowie. It's a cover by Mijur. Ah, what's the the song? Uh, the man who sold the world. Um. Uh, it's a whole 
it's a whole thing. Yeah. The commentary. So they know, like, the special ops are diamond dogs, and mm-hmm. that's a whole Bowie thing. Yep, yep. And, um, that, I mean, I, I don't know what, uh, your plans are with the Metal Gear Solid series. I don't want to drop any major spoilers, but there's a whole bunch of... If, if you've played Death Stranding at all and seen where he's like, this means like six things, ha ha ha. He very much does that with the David Bowie stuff in uh, 5. Oh, yeah. It just puts in stuff to be like, hey, I... I don't want this to go lost on anybody. Well, it's, it, it's like... I don't mean that. What I mean is like... Um, the entire core of Death Stranding is the uh, every dictionary meaning of strand is used in the game because it's to make a loan, it's a type of beach, it's a type of thread, and those are all extremely featured things. Threads connect people. Beaches are places that connect oceans to land. And this game connects the meanings of all these words. <laughs> this game connects all of the players. Uh, the way that uh, the online world uh, interacts with the... It's, it's like Dark Souls. Yeah. And so the, the, the big theme is connections, which uses strands, which uses the fact that strands are beaches, the fact that strands are strings, and the fact that strands means being left alone. Uh, and he does that with David Bowie in Metal Gear Solid V. <laughs> it is what I'm trying to say without spoilers. No, I appreciate it, because I, I do want to play. It's just I haven't really had the, the hardware or the opportunity to. Hey, okay, well, now you can play one through three. Really easy. Yeah, they got one that. through three oh, in the original. Right. Well, I mean, I had one through three on my. Uh, I got the PS2 collector set. Mm-hmm. C4 was the one I wasn't able to play. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, that has not changed, but I own it. If you ever <laughs> want to play it on my PS3. Yeah, uh, Aaron's actually offered. Yep. But then Baldur's Gate. Three came out, and that's the only game I need for the rest of my life. So, it's a good game. If you want, uh, I've been. Never mind. I just remember we're going to talk about it. I just remembered we're going to talk about it later. Don't worry about that. Fair enough. Um, what are we sitting at time was? Uh, you got about five. How long minutes. I've been working on this? You got about five minutes. Just an arbitrary five minutes as soon as I ask. Yeah. That was the, uh, I, um, I was just going to let you draw until you ask how much time you had left, and I'd say about five minutes. <laughs> All Not right, I just got to find a font. It's 8.30 now, and we got a lead start. It's the Wild West. How would you do it? I, I would, would do it uh, punctu- punctuously. We ain't got class out here. We just got trains. I'm going to punctually do it. <laughs> I'm going to punctually do it, by yeah. which I mean I'm going to throw hands nope. in the pit for no reason. That's, see, and this is something you can feel free to explain to me. It seems very hateful. <laughs> no, it's just getting a lot of that aggression out. On to people. No, oh, but everybody in the pits there as a for the same as a reason. willing and able-bodied member. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I understand. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying outlaw mosh pits, but they just seem so angry to me. Oh, see, like I've met some of the friendliest people I'll ever meet in a mosh pit. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know how chill Mike Tyson is. That's because he's a fucking. He's been a fucking monster. He's done. <laughs> Like, yeah, once you've beaten the shit out of somebody that didn't deserve it, it calms you down. <laughs> oh, see, I think that's where, like, the the misconception comes from, is that, like, ideally, we're not going in there to legitimately beat the shit out of each other. We're just right, right. bumping into each other. We're not... Unless you're at, like, a, a 2005 hardcore show. You're yeah, not yeah. throwing bows and, like, spin kicking. <laughs> You know, it's funny when you say it like that, it sounds less upsetting to me than the phrase moshing. <laughs> <laughs> you made it sound so fucking cool. It's a lot of fun. Like, 
we all get kind of rowdy together, but we're all there to get rowdy together. But also, if somebody falls, like, all arms go down to lift that person up immediately. It's such a cool spectacle to see. Yeah, that's nice. So, uh, where did we land on the... On the greeting for this greeting card? Uh, we go in dark. Oh, uh, we, we were in... tied. I said... Okay, then I'm gonna tie break. You're gonna do funny on the outside. Yeah. Do a death mullet, if you will. <laughs> is that somewhere between a death hawk and a mullet? No, a death mullet is funny on the outside. This is in the back. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. I think you got it in reverse, but... Well, with death, it wouldn't be yeah. business in the front, because you're hiding the business. That's true. You got it? You writing it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I just gotta... I'm listening to my favorite song from Hotline Miami right now. Oh yeah, is it um, is it a uh, uh, sandstorm? <laughs> it is the song you're thinking of. Hydrogen. It's hydrogen by Moon. Yeah. Yeah, sandstorm. Yeah. It is similar. I mean, you know, in the sense that it goes. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> well, that's my beep is boop song I picked up from a. Uh... Saints Row 3. Oh, uh, yeah, human music. Hmm. Hmm, yes, the thing people listen to. Uh. Sea Bat? That's a, that's a good bleeps and bloops song. It's no, that I don't song see that. Was, uh... <laughs> you don't see Bat? No. You I'm play sorry. some Animal Crossing. You will, you will <laughs> see Bat. <laughs> Until you can't stand it anymore. Yes, you will. What do y'all think of this card? I think he's really gonna like it. Yeah. Yeah, make it cooler though. Yeah, make it cooler. Oh, uh, okay, cool. Uh, um, maybe have him doing a kickflip. I guess. Like maybe a skateboard in there, or yeah. Well, just, well, no, 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 no. I'm not saying add anything. I'm saying make it cooler. <laughs> Okay, I know what to do. <laughs> Thank you. I don't like that to repeat yeah. myself. Like, it's important. Good that you made an exception this time. Yeah, it's important yeah. to your pride. No, not my pride. It's for Joe. Oh. Well, if it's for Joe, fucking anything. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It needs to be cooler. <laughs> that's the third time. Would you say 20%? I would refuse to elaborate on any numbers in this matter. It just needs to be I cooler. See, I fail to see how that's relevant to the discussion. <laughs> um, I, uh, there's I a... don't know any other My Little Pony quotes, unfortunately. I was going to try and continue on in that. That's right. You don't have to do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Time is gone. There's... Ah, oh, fuck. What was I even saying? needs to be cooler. No, not, <laughs> not that. <laughs> um, well, so the other, he's not the wrong. Other, the other thing I was saying. No, it's true. I. It doesn't need to be cooler. But <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll find something else to say. Don't even worry about it. Um, How cool would you say it is if Tony Hawk is ollieing over the moon? Excessively, um, I love it. I don't think Tony Hawk's cool. Oh. Uh, I disagree. So. That's okay. Well, what is Joe? Yeah. What is Joe? That's, that's why I didn't answer your question. I instead told you that you don't want to ask me. Well, good thing it's not for you. It's for Joe. I, I'm just saying that I can't gauge how cool Tony Hawk is doing anything. I don't think he's very cool. Okay, but. All right, who's someone you think is cool? Um, How cool would it be if Neil Gaiman ollied over the moon? <laughs> well, you know, Neil Gaiman's... He's only all right. <laughs> all right, but 
<laughs> how cool would it be just all right let's let's start for grassroots here do you have a picture how of cool that? is the concept of ollieing over the moon oh my god is that what you're trying to say yes i sorry about that yeah it's all right <laughs> oh yeah i've done it no big <laughs> no 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 i haven't done it you didn't say how possible it is you said how cool is it yeah, how cool is it? It's okay! <laughs> it's okay, cool. It could be more iconoclastic, don't you think? Do you have a picture of Joe doing an ollie? <laughs> that would help. <laughs> that would help. Uh, we can make one, but I think we got <laughs> other business to attend to. Yeah, maybe next year, Joe. Sorry. Yeah, we can work on this card all day. <clears throat> Well, let's move it on. Uh, Thor, you... You had the privilege of DMing our... Or rather, my game of D&D &D yesterday. And we played mm -hmm. Spelljammer. We did. We jammed a spell or two in there. We did. For those of you <laughs> uh, unaware of what that is, it's D&D &D in space. Yeah, literally um, the same sort of canon. Worth worth mentioning, it's not like um, Shadowrun is like fantasy and cyberpunk, but uh, Spelljammer is literally what happens, the rules for what happens out in the Astral Sea, which is what surrounds all of uh, physical reality in the the world. Yeah. In, in that game, I mean. So it's, it's, it's space and it's fantasy. Very well put. And it's very... Now fun. hold on! Yeah? Hold on, you can't have two genres in the same thing. I won't allow it. Travis, you know those those books that you read in, in Sunday uh, school? The Dizzy World of Richard Scary? Yeah. Do you read uh, a Richard Scary book? Yeah. Is it really reading it? Don't you just look at the pictures? There are words. There are words. I guess and my, I my knowledge out of, all these letters. My my knowledge of Richard Scary is excluded to um, pediatric waiting rooms, and uh, there was a TV show very briefly. Uh, those are adaptations of the illustrious book set. <laughs> I see. Well, I've lost. Anyway, the, I've lost the thread. Travis, I want you to draw me some uh, Spelljammer crewmates, some sci-fi fantasy people on a sci-fi fantasy boat. Yeah, I, looks like the boat's pulled up right here. All right, now it's docked. It's just lacking a crew. Now. I do have a couple uh, parameters for the crew that I'm looking for. Oh, jeez. Oh, I know, I know. I, I've sent you a detailed list of the crewmates that I would like to have on this ship. If you can take a look at looking that. now, it just says Forest Knight. Yes, it <laughs> does. You gotta click on the little boxes. Did that tell me? Mine just says Forrest Gump. <laughs> There's no little that's... boxes, but whatever, fuck it. You... That's not gonna help me. And you wouldn't know by looking at me, but I could run forever. Ah, <laughs> uh, he's Gump. He's Gump. Okay. Yes, so... I've, I've got an exquisite taste. All right. Well, I think I can work with that. Good, good. If not, we'd have problems. No. I don't. I don't want problems. Good. How fast do you think you can? Uh... Who does? <laughs> who does? How fast do you think you can uh, find who I'm looking for? Ah, uh, we'll start recruiting post haste. Okay. Okay. Well, you've got a uh, got an hour. Let's see how fast you can go. It's not a race. I, d I don't want someone that's going to shoot me in the back. And 
Just to be Hello? sure, a gif is a hippo, hippo person, right? Yeah. yeah. No, okay. Not a gif yonky. <laughs> you ready to be a thing? Sarai. Yeah, I'm ready. In that case, three, Break it so. two, one, space draw. Space draw. Whoa. Woo! Uh, Travis, you would love Spelljammer for the record. Oh, I know it. It's Space Pirates. It's, um... The tone, having having played in one of your more recent games since you've, I don't know, you know, found your your, your particular style and stuff, I think. Uh, the tone, I think, really matches what you like to go for, just baseline. There's a race of um, merchants in Spelljammer that you see out, you know, in sea and, and, and in, like, wild space uh, that are penguin people <laughs> who only talk telepathically, but it's only possible to link with a non-other uh, penguin person by linking to a penguin person and then like conference calling in the third person. <laughs> oh, uh, so called... they have secretaries. Yeah, so they're called Doar and you have to talk to two of them at once. You can never talk to just one. Me. Yeah. There's a bunch of really interesting races and stuff in that. I did and... uh I think I told Aaron that there was a there were a couple other side things I wanted to include, but they never really came up in that one shot. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to include a sentient cloud of daggers who's just trying to make their way through the crowd without hurting anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah, both, um, Planescape and Spelljammer, that is a dead on what their tones are like. Um, because what, the first thing that uh, a lot of the early people who were pitching, uh, Sigil, for example, from Planescape, was like a place where you would find uh, an angel and a demon playing chess and they've been doing this for years you know meeting here in sigil where their gods can't see that's Ooh. fun that's like that's like one of the first things that they sort of pitch in the books as an idea because it was i think back even in the beginning a core idea it's like you run into elementals here and they run a bakery instead of you know working in a cult uh, i like they, that a lot yeah, I like, they introduced... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just like the... The kind of blend of... New world, old, old world, and... Silliness overall. Hey, tell them about... Very... Tell them about Luigi. Yeah, this is a canon thing in the Forgotten Realms. Um, I took them to a canon location. I, I won't get into it, but essentially... They ended up in Spelljammer, like canon Spelljammer, and... Uh, in one of the main Spelljammer cities called the Rock of Brawl, which is a, uh, a mile-long meteor uh, named after the guy who found it. Uh, uh, it sounds like a prison. The Rock of Brawl is uh, just like a... It's right... It, it, it's in the series of asteroids that uh, sit next to the moon of Toril, the main Faerun world. It's in oh, okay. Saluna's Tears. Which is just a constellation everybody in Toril with now. It's Long Ring Long Land. Mm -hmm. That's that's Sigil. Sigil is a ring. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this is the bar. And never the two shall meet. Well, you see, the ring, uh, Sigil is a city that is on the inside of like a sonic ring shape. Ooh. And it's, like, only accessible from magical portals. It's completely unbroken, the ring. Um, and it's called the City of Doors. It's a city where uh, it just happens to be this... Well, the city was built because the place itself was this perfect cross-section. Millions, probably millions, I don't know, thousands at least, of mundane objects are actually Ds. They're Ds. Doors with keys. <laughs> These nuts. Doors with keys. Yeah. That to any any canon location, any non-canon location. Sigil, the astral plane, the astral sea, and Spelljammer all work perfectly to com combine any canon you're interested in doing that would work with the D20 system. Yeah, I mean, Wizards has been pretty all about that. Mm -hmm. it, it surprised it didn't. It surprised me a little. They they took so long to get to Planescape. Uh, Spelljammer didn't surprise me. They were very not into 
the kind of goofy 80s sci-fi fantasy tone of like, oh look, this is a horse wearing a conical hat. He's the wizard of steeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And that is very much like the kind of humor Spelljammer and Sigil were founded on, honestly. Like, you know, the only people who liked nerdy things back then were computer programmers. Right. That's why it was so much more numbers-based. Well, yeah, it and so much more of entry. dad humor -y as well. Like, D&D &D stuff from back then is, like, old... It's, it's largely older dudes that liked it. You know? Make yeah. stupid puns. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, that's that's my bread and butter. Right, and I mean, I, I don't dis I don't dislike it at all personally, but it's definitely a style they were like actively aware of not doing uh, when they started Five E and all through Four E, of course. Yeah, and I think it makes sense. Like the the kind of dark fantasy aesthetic was way bigger in the. In the roots of D and D, mm -hmm. because it wasn't as prevalent. Like, I think it's just media presence has a lot yeah. to do with it. I know. I, I agree. Ultimately, no matter how cool it gets, D D and D exists because it's an alternative to media that is currently available. <laughs> like, D and D is giving you something you're not getting from something else, even if it is that act that that degree of control. It doesn't exist. Um, it sort of exists in the context of the media landscape always, I think. Absolutely. More so than anything, because everything does, but, you know, extra amounts. It gave a lot of people tools, and like you said, a lot of computer programmers tools to exercise certain creative freedoms they wouldn't necessarily get to exercise in their day-to-day. -day. Yeah, and uh, I mean, the original Final Fantasy games, they're like 1000% based directly on D&D. Yeah. And I mean, it all roots back to Tolkien fantasy. Like, it's, it's just well, a bunch I, of Tolkien dorks getting together. Well, it's not even just that. What I mean is, like, um, in the, the very first Final Fantasy game and the second one uh, use spell slots exactly the same as D&D &D does. And, like, mm. you, fight, you fight recolors of Mind Flayers and, you know, all the classic D&D &D monsters. <laughs> Red Caps... Exactly, yeah. Um, and that's cool. Uh, I didn't realize it was so directly like that. And that's why the RPG trope in Japan of uh, reviving your... Dragging your party member to a church and reviving them, that reference, you know? Mm -hmm. Because that's what you would do in D&D. &D. <laughs> you know, and then they I've never really thought about down. it. Yeah. I didn't think of it either until I played it through... Uh, I played it recently through the Pixel Remaster, and I was like, "This is just normal D and D rules. They 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 they, they really were just going to make a D and D game and then dip." Sorry, you're going to say share? Nothing. No, I was just replying. I had never thought of it like that. Yeah, there's some real clear red flag. Not red flags, but signs. Uh. If you if you've played a lot of D and D, just words they would use that you know come from D and D, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, a lot of the the monsters. Mm -hmm. Like I think the first time I encountered an Abolith was in a Final Fantasy game. Yeah. <clears throat> I uh. Final Fantasy and D&D &D weirdly have a lot in common now as these overarching lore worlds that are so adaptable to any desire you might have. Like uh, Mimics and Gelatinous Cubes and stuff, they make D&D &D to a large degree, like the Chocobos and Malboros and, and uh, Tonberries and stuff make Final Fantasy. Right. I think, you know, they have their Beholder. They have their, you know, uh, Mind Flayer and stuff for D for Final Fantasy now. Uh, and so obviously you're not going to see nearly as much of that stuff. Though in 15, like you didn't see some full-on Mind Flayers. Mm -hmm. They've always been a classic. 15 uh, really was really embracing that stuff. It really went back to, like, 
you start fighting goblins in 15, which is intentionally a callback to how the game, the old game, all started with you fighting goblins because they were all D and D. Hmm. It's the quintessential fantasy level one monster. Mm hmm. I like bullywugs. I have to like sort of force myself not to use them too much. Oh yeah, I mean like. By their core rules, they're nasty. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to uh, have them get horribly destroyed on crit failures, because it is uh, official D&D lore that Bullywugs were a terrible accident that the gods hate. <laughs> like it's, uh, the, Just like the how gods didn't, David gods Edinburgh didn't... hates toads. Yeah, the gods didn't mean to make Bullywugs. It was an accident, and they wish they weren't around. <laughs> uh, and so I like to have horrible things happen to anybody who's aligned with Bullywugs. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I'll just like insta kill them on crit fails. Something happens. They fought Bullywugs in a ship graveyard, for example, and like the Bullywug crit failed and managed to cause like the collapse of one of the rickety ships that killed more than one Bullywug. That's a lot of fun. Um, Reminds me of a manga I'm reading currently. Oh, yeah? Undead Unluck. Oh, dude, I love Undead Unluck. Yeah, so for the people out there, there's a character who can't die and a character where the longer she maintains like physical contact with somebody, the more luck she saps away or something. He causes an unluck event, yeah. Yeah. So, like, a more catastrophic event will occur. Yeah, and uh, a big thing of the, the series is that the undead wants to find out her, like, the, the more complex rules of her condition so that he can cause his death. Wants to push those limits. Mm -hmm. Because she's not able to kill him right now and he wants her to be able to. So you find out in, like, the first or second episode that the more she likes a person, the worse it is. Um... And he's like, she keeps that from him because obviously she doesn't want him to know. Yeah, it's a, it's great. It's it's really good. It starts out um, how I expected, and then it goes very different quickly. Yeah, it it has some fun character rules with them all being kind of unbased, um, but. It never loses kind of like the heart of focusing on the characters. Yeah, it, it is extremely character focused. Um, now, and, if, go ahead. If it's an Asimar, sorry, getting back to the drawing here. Yeah. If it's Asimar, is it specifically like celestial? Does that include any pantheon? Like, are all gods celestial, or is that? Uh, well, uh, we've got you here, Thor. You might know a little bit more about that lore than I do. Yeah, uh, so Asimar are specifically Celestial, yes. Um, because a Cambion is essentially... Uh, well, sorry, not a Cambion. Duh. A Tiefling is essentially an Asimar of Infernal. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be any specific race of the actual, uh, the human half or whatever, the humanoid half. Um, and it doesn't have to be specific presentation, no. Um, especially not with a DM that knows what they're doing. Uh, you shouldn't, in my opinion, be playing with any DM that's going to tell you you can't do some, like, have a skin color or hair color or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I just... It's half Asmar, half something else. And so I was wondering about building this, uh, this particular character... Mm -hmm. uh, if certain deities kind of fell in within that pantheon, but it seems uh, like but... Celestial is a different pantheon than a lot of the typical so, gods. Um, well, no, imagine Celestial as divine. Like, it, it, okay. if you imagine, like, divine damage and infernal damage. Uh, unlike infernal, yeah. bloodline isn't called, cel uh, isn't called divine, it's called Celestial. Things that are things that have divinity are celestials. Okay, so I can make this. 
kind of like a a bloodline of Grumsh. I don't think. Well, I don't. I don't, I don't know if they're if, if Grumsh is divine. See, that um, was where it all. Li- that's where it all lied. But I kind of buried the lead. Here it is: Celestials, powerful outsiders, typically of good alignment, and the cosmological counterpoint to fiends. Fiends being demons and devils, specifically. So essentially, Celestial, Fae, and Fiend cover all types of being that would be magical, basically. So they're kind of off doing their own thing, and then mortal realm be damned. It just means gods, whether they're in pantheons together or not, whether they're... Yeah. And fiends refers to both demons and devils, for example, because even the devils and demons are in different uh, port- you know, planes or whatever. Mm-hmm. They uh, they are both fiends. Celestials are the same. They have different heavens, but gods are celestial. Gotcha. Um, so an angel, which are existent things like the humanoid with cool, pretty wings, angel, uh, would, for example, create a celestial where they Sephiroth. Yeah. Well, it's not an angel. When in the case of Sephiroth, he's just a dickhead. But yeah. Uh, the song says different. Okay. The song is from an unrelated opera. The song's from wrestling. (laughs) (laughs) Kenny. My favorite opera. Omega. Omega. The one-winged wrestler. (laughs) Well, his finisher is the one-winged angel. Yeah. I've caught up on that much, at least. <laughs> it's cool. It's 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 a, it's a finisher that's been kicked out of once. Yeah, ever. By who? Uh, his, his best friend and perhaps lover, Kota Ibushi. Uh-huh. They were a tag team called the Golden Lovers, and their character, because they were in DDT, which was a Japanese comedy group, their characters were that they were ambiguously homosexual, and they were called the Golden Lovers because uh, uh, Ibushi's called the Golden something or other. And, uh, yeah, and they would they would just, like, for example, their tag finisher was called the Golden Shower, and they would be, like, very, uh, they would hug each other a lot and stuff, you know? <laughs> But they've been like uh-huh. life ta- lifelong friends and rivals ever since coming up together in DDT. I love them. Mm-hmm. Alex loves them too. I hope they I hope they find their love. They're unashamed to say it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um The Rite of Spring is the name of the song that One Winged Angel was essentially cribbed from specifically the uh, the tune of the chor- the chorus a 1913 Stravinsky ballet Les Sacres du Printemps This is what I do this is what my life is a little, little peek little tidbits yeah But, uh, yeah, it's, um, in Latin, I think. <laughs> and it, it's, like, really silly, simple words. None of them say he's an angel, though, just to be, just to be clear. But they say Sephiroth. They do say Sephiroth. Um, because I don't know how much you know about Final Fantasy VII, but, uh, he... He's just a genetic experiment, and because uh, what he was cloned from was from space, he assumed it was an angel. Yeah, it's from the Materia mother thing. You know what? Weirdly, he thinks that's true, but that's also not true. <laughs> We're talking about oh, because Materia is like the planet energy, the ancients, which he thinks his mom is. Um were a race of humanoids just like humans that were in tune with the planet and could commune to the dead because all the dead go to the live stream. 
Sephiroth was created with an alien that they found in a meteor. <laughs> And he thinks she's an ancient, and he thinks that makes her an angel, and he thinks that makes him an angel. Oh. He's just baby. In, he's fully insane. Like, fully out of his mind. And uh, he just wants to bring about the end of the world so that ancients can have the world instead. He's honestly, he's not a terribly complex character. But maybe people like that about him, I don't know. I always used to hate it about him, but seeing more of Sephiroth, I've definitely come to like him more. Yeah. And seeing uh, more of the world, it just makes sense. He's just kind of vile in a way that was sort of... He's pretty Joker mode. <laughs> it was pretty It was pretty missing from my... from people trying to understand or to explain the character to me. You know? That, like, he's kind of pathetic. He's... He's he, his whole illusions of grandeur because he can't handle the idea that he was made for no reason. He snaps when he realizes that he's not some like god, or when he gets the information that says he's not some god, and decides to paint that that vision. You know. Yeah. Because he didn't know and he that's... was created. And I think that's a lot of uh, narration at play there, because it's. I mean, based on time frame, middle schoolers telling you this information, it's like, nobody wears a black trench coat and his big sword. Well, you know, people still think he's very, very cool, but you're right, there is a certain immaturity to it. It's just, well, he's beautiful, and he wants to destroy the world in a cool, campy, melodramatic way, so that makes him awesome and sexy. I just mean, in the ways that were first, like, in which he was first presented to you. Mm-hmm. And, uh... He's much more interesting because he is so broken that his only way to deal with the world is to paint himself as a god and paint the world as worthy of his punishment. And I like that. Yeah, it adds some layers to a JRPG big bad. Yeah, I think a lot of uh, JRPG villains actually do get some of the better attention paid in that uh, way. But actually, Seven has a lot more depth than I ever gave it credit for. There, there are a lot of themes that it does extremely well. Um, not the least of which being Mako Energy as nuclear power, including the weighted history of nuclear energy in Japan, you know? Mm-hmm. And so why that that's why even though we would we would make it about uh, I don't know coal or oil or something you know what I mean and that's a really funny thing Barrett his backstory is that he's from just an honest coal town <laughs> but they were swindled into <laughs> switching to Mako oh how dare they but I mean it it carries so much more weight over there which yeah I feel like was a it was a message that might have been actively subdued while we were growing up. <laughs> just anti-nuclear? Yeah, or just kind of having any kind of understanding of what other countries go through. I mean, we, we, we were uh, sort of instructed to view them all as, like, everybody who didn't live in America as, like, a starving child in some war-torn country. Yeah. Foreigners? enemies yeah, they're, 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 that's, well that's exactly right and it's 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 so similar to the uh the same thing with women uh but for the sake of twitch uh the madonna nasty girl complex <laughs> where either you as a woman have to be the picture of virtue or you are a ruined um slug yeah <laughs> <laughs> Icky, gross. That's got to be rough. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, it's a similar thing because when you have the power, you're able to force other people to be seen, not in one way. Generally speaking, no one's ever successful at that. It's in one of two ways that both are harmful. You know. Mm-hmm. We need more of that, because I'm fragile and don't want to cater my own self-image. Yeah, well, 
Good news. I get that, man. Uh, until recently in my life, I literally had no concept of self. And has that changed? I would Are say you... so. Uh, yeah. I got medicated, like seriously medicated. That's good. Yep, yeah, it's getting Are better. You... Well, I... I hope it's good. Yeah, no, it is good. It, it's, it's great. Being off of the pills reminds me how far I've come sometimes because I'll be like, why am I being paranoid and angry and scared right now about the chips and the couch? <laughs> let's follow that. Yeah. Yeah, let's dig in. It's not a specific thing. I just, you know, I, in my mind space, I, when I say the chips and the couch, I mean, the only thing on, on my plate is eating chips and sitting on the couch. Yeah. But uh, just your you know, immediate surroundings. It's a constant state of unrest that comes from like generalized anxiety, trauma, lots of things. I hear that. Um, but you know, and people you're are not always. If you just, I mean, a lot of it comes through normalization, and then you normalize these things, and it turns out, no, not everybody's functioning like that. Like high school was a nightmare for me because I was afraid to make an eye contact with anybody. Yeah. And I was always just at such like an elevated state of anxiety. And I'm just like, how does everybody function like this? And it turns out they weren't. Yeah. Like if you want an example of somebody functioning like that, you look to me, not uh, successful people. <laughs> <laughs> Cause yeah, I mean, it was the same thing for me where it was like, Hmm, uh, it's time to go to that hurt building where I don't feel good. But that's just what you do. Yeah, and it is. You literally soldier on, and (laughs) soldier on, and thirty second silence is, I think, actually, (laughs) literally, exactly what happens. Yeah, indicative. (laughs) Uh, so we were gonna maybe give some boon or curse items for these characters here oh yeah i forgot about that let's see so um to to peel away the curtain a little bit uh this guy is this is um hold on i forgot which what i gave you uh this is a half asimar half orc full thief full thief old woman (laughs) and so i figured i'd give him like a little halo that's kind of like trying to break out but that's his his juxtaposition i don't know breaking against holy order to steal and live free okay yeah, I mean, it, it, it makes sense, too, if, if, you're, if you're picturing, for example, something like Grumsh. Um, Grumsh uh, is all about not being able to control what is natural. Uh, like, Grumsh wants orcs to give in to the blood rage he instilled them with. And it could be Grumsh, it could be anything else. Like, <laughs> I kind of came up with this while we were talking about that, is that it could be like a lawful good celestial type and you know it's kind of given in through bloodline but they want to go out and be a pirate right they want to steal i think that's cool do you know what else is really neat always that urge to go to do good yeah that makes sense i think that an urge to do good is going to get somebody like that in a lot of trouble i think that's really cool um, because like when you want to be, oh, I'm so su- I'm, I'm a super sneaky, super crafty guy. You know, I'm getting getting people all the time. Wanting to help people is gonna hurt you so much in that world. Yeah. So I think it's cool. Were you were you were saying something about an item? Uh, yeah. So we're potentially gonna assign each of these crewmates with a. Uh... A magic or cursed item, and we're gonna poll the folks out there to see what they want to see. Or Oops. if we could randomly roll one up, folks. 
I'm not voting for folks. I'm telling the folks to get on it. Yeah, get on it. Get on it, folks. This is your job. <laughs> this is why we got you here. They had one job. I'm playing Jump King. Oh, yeah? How's like Late, Lately. It's immensely frustrating. Yes, it is. But I am actually a notoriously patient individual. I was thinking maybe a uh, an eyepiece of some sort that could see a valuable on someone. Maybe someone's most valuable thing, but it's the most valuable thing to them. Ah. So it's not necessarily curse, but it just has caveats. Yeah. Swipes eye. Flax That's eye? what I'd call it. The swipes eye. Swipes eye. Yeah. And if they say swipe side, no swiping three times. Is See, that I Alexa going that. off in the background? That is Alexa. Not mine. It's, uh, it's Aaron's. The houses. Yeah. Um, well, I meant it's not my speaker either, but uh, what was I saying? Oh, um, in, in, our, in our own campaign setting we've been playing in, there are these large uh, species of birds that are called swipes. And the the ones that are black, the the night swipes uh, can tell on us on the surface level animalistic mind read what the person values most, and they try to take it just to put on their nest. They just build nests out of the stuff. Ooh. So it'd be like the eye of That's the spot, person, you know. There's a couple of different ones, but the it's night swipes the ones you see the most because uh, they come to people to steal shit to make nests out of. Um, there is a type of swipe that is much more rare that uh, is able to psychically intuit the song that it can it can sing, that it can songbird, that will most please the creature it is doing it for. Oh, like a siren. Mm-hmm. But these ones are less dangerous. They're not. I mean, sometimes they use it to get fed or whatever, but mostly they just know that if there's like it's it's, it's a survival mechanism to if you're threatened by something, start singing its favorite song is the idea. Yeah. Okay. You're just slightly less likely to die when that happens. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to do an entire bestiary. It's so much work. Yeah. Like, trying to come up with all the stats, all of the special interactions, and how they work. Yeah, I have these lightning tigers with like arm, like bone armor plates. They grew. Imagine, if you will, Raiko from Pokemon mixed with the lightning zebra from Final Fantasy. <laughs> and, pretty cool. Uh, Sounds like a Digimon. It yeah. looks kind of like Digimon. And uh, it was going to be all the horses were creatures like that. Like there would be no horses in this continent. Um, but I just, I just. I couldn't do it. It's so much planning. Yeah. Um, so I just did it so for a while. I wing it. them feel like they were somewhere else. Hey, it yeah, it's really hard to come up with consistent rules. Like, I wanted to do a... Well, I have a one shot I was kind of working on, but it's hard to do... A uh, like a dungeon crawl is a one shot. I figured out. Yeah, it can because be, yeah, certain things you, you kind of want go. everything to be in uh, in initiative, I guess, in order to have certain things kind of play out the way you want. But this is a sloppy gray area that is one hundred percent the fault of the game. Honestly, uh, like, well, okay, not one hundred percent. They do suggest just act an in initiative in these scenarios. I don't really care for that very much. So I only do that when. Um, uh, goals are opposed, if that makes sense. Like, the moment two players are reaching for the same thing uh, and are willing to fight for each other, each other, that's initiative between the two, you know? Yeah, but, and you can't have moments like that if if they're moving initiative to begin with. Oh, I see what you're saying. They they really crawl because they know it's a dungeon crawl, sort of on a meta level, and they they're like constantly yeah. trapped, so there's never they're never out of initiative, so you don't feel like you role play. Mm hmm. Um, but it's also hard to have, like. Sometime. You I can't will. have, like, kind of ambient. Ambient monsters, I guess, is a big thing. 
Like you can't have kind of like these creep monsters out of out of combat. Wandering monsters, just yeah, kind of is, as an impediment. As an impediment. Yeah. Um. Well. Ultimately, I guess it doesn't really do all that much harm. You can talk <laughs> in initiative and everything. Um, yeah. Not freely. Like, I mean, I think that'll probably help if you start in, uh, enforcing the you can speak six words as a bonus action if you speak more. Mm. It's your action. Um, the people, they will probably drop initiative pretty quick there. Um, anyway, I was going to suggest um, we're not going to play it for a bit. Uh, you can borrow my copy of Dungeon of the Mad Mage if you'd like. It is a 25 floor dungeon that is all dungeon that mixes all elements of D&D into it. Like I learned a lot about dungeon making just from reading that book so I could run the game. Yeah, I'd love to take a look at it. Yeah, I we're not going to play it for a bit so as long as uh, you know, In the meantime, let's take a break and I can take a look at that book. Sure, yeah. Sick. I can do that. We'll be right back. I got that, that stutter out. It's good that you got it out. Yeah, a stutter will hide inside the throat. A little bit of this a... is so cute. It's like a tooltip. A secret stutter. No, yeah, I mean Travis... it forms a symbiotic relationship with the with the epiglottis. You're rotating a there's a rotating picture of like a ghoul, a feral ghoul, and it says a stutter will it will hide inside the throat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's yeah. me, the stutter. No, kill him. That's all, folks. Better be. <laughs> you see, I, I think my uh, my canvas is squished a little bit on stream. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Widthwise, just wanted to. I got it fixed. Looks good. Cool. Uh, you feel like doing a second one of those? Another crewmate for this mate? Yeah, we're building our hearty crew here. Awesome. Ready to jam some spells? Well, we can do the one that I previously wrote down for you. Or, if you, uh, anyone out there has a suggestion, we can go with that. Now's folks. your time to speak. Fellas and folks and, and gentlemen. Well, that does include you. No. Chat, outlaws out there. We give you this opportunity so rarely. Holy shit, like from Outlaw Golf? I'm in. Exactly from Outlaw Golf. Right. All of you, uh, felonous golfers. You, you know all those let's fucking go memes with, like, the, the smiley face and everything? Yeah. They look so much like the Outlaw Golf mascot. All I can think of is golf trying to be hard in the 90s when I see people using those, like, let's fucking go faces. Let's fucking golf. I don't know what Outlaw Golf is, but... Oh, it's a PS2 game where the girls didn't wear much clothing and there were dirty jokes and it was a golf game. Yeah, this one's not for your mom. This ain't your daddy's golf. Hi. And what was uh, BMX Triple X, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the... um, there's a volleyball one. That, not not dead or alive. That wasn't dead or alive. Yeah, there was a volleyball one. Was it just outlaw volleyball? Probably. It can't be. I don't know. It was a whole thing for a while. But my point is, when I was a kid, half the golf balls I saw had <laughs> extremely <laughs> aggressive or excited faces on them. Yep. <laughs> and every time I see it, I think of it. Well, I think we can uh, get this going. But if anyone out there has an idea for a magical item you'd like to see this person blessed or cursed with, send it our way. Sorry. It's okay. Now's your time. I fell. I'm playing Jump King. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> if you want, I can I throw it up on Discord and I'll, th I'll show the world. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, that sounds great. Travis, I got time up. You ready? Yeah, let's go. Three, two, one. I've already started. Base draw. <laughs> Fuck you. A second. Well, okay. I can't. This is not agreed to. I can't stop you. No, nah, once I get rolling, once I've popped. Yeah, you you do like those quaaludes. 
You got any loots? Yeah. I, uh, Once I, I pop. Got a surplus supply. I got those quays. I'm quack My as long lost loot. uncle was a, a pharmacist in the 80s. Oh, he was a looter looter. <laughs> looter. Oh, shit. That sounds like a. That sounds like an enemy you'd run into in Fallout. <laughs> it does. Or I guess even more Borderlands. Yeah. Looter, oh. looter. Bang's computers had a wife but couldn't boot her. <laughs> <laughs> looter, I barely know her. <laughs> yeah. That was Aaron. That that one's that one's inspired by your journey. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron's got a desktop that currently can't function. Yeah, it's annoying. It is it is depreciating oh, in value sorry. by the second. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> because PCs PCs have in value the moment uh, somebody buy, mines point one Bitcoin. Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. That's a rough story, bud. I uh, I was looking at upgrading my PC lately. I ended up getting a Black Friday graphics card. Nice. And so nice. I've been trying to figure everything out with that. Um, I did install a motherboard and a graphics card once, and it was definitely one of the harder things I've done, but the computer does work great. Well, I built this whole PC, and wow. I... Uh, I was going to get a whole new motherboard, graphics card, and processor because I really like the new uh, Intel i not or Raptor Lake processors. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I figured I'd just get a little interstitial kind of quality boost in the meantime, so I got a $300 graphics card. Oh, yeah, that'll help. Yeah, it'll do something. It was cool, except all the, the cables were different than my previous one. So fell again. the the new cables set me just over budget. That sucks. But That's I did find go. out that my uh, one of my monitors that I've had for two years actually has built in speakers and I never knew. Oh, well, those always suck. You're not missing anything. <laughs> oh, no, I always use my headphones anyway. It's just. You know, a good, fun little surprise. Good for troubleshooting. Yeah. It's a secret from everyone. It is good for troubleshooting. And it'll be nice if I ever have to charge my headphones and take a spin on the exercise bike or something. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, exercise bike? Did you ever... Uh, um... I'm falling. Yes, I did. I did. You put it up on Discord? Mm -hmm. uh, where? Uh, I don't know, General. Connected to Dead Man's Saloon. On the air. Maybe I have something. <laughs> Maybe. Stream Jump King. Go live. I tried again. Well, it doesn't matter. Nope. Oh well. That's not why they're here. Nope. I just thought I it'd be fun. It they intuited it. Yeah, you can put it really small in the corner or something. <laughs> oh yeah, that that could be really fun. Little side game. Get a side bet going on. I'd be much better at uh, gaming than drawing, certainly. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna watch you through Steam. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -oh. This is gonna look Sorry, great. Those are, still, those are still jump sounds. <laughs> boop boop. You gotten it? Well, anyway, uh, it's really fun. Uh, Spelljammer, I really, really enjoyed. Uh, and uh, I, 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 like I said, I got to run a city that had specifics. And Large Luigi runs a uh, a tavern on the Rock of Brawl, a real location called the Happy Beholder. And he is a beholder who is happy. And it's like the most popular tavern on the the Rock. Oh, neat. Mm -hmm. um, you're familiar with Spencer Crittenden, right? Uh, I think so. Um, 
he had a an entire bar that was a mimic <laughs> that was called like Seamus O'Houlihan's The Living Bar. Mm-hmm. And it just traveled from place to place doing, you know, typical tavern business. Get served by a tongue with like a trench coat on. <laughs> <laughs> What brings you to town? You see as like a the tip of a tongue is sliming up the inside of this beer glass. <laughs> Aaron wanted me to tell you about large large Luigi. I never got there for whatever reason. Yeah, they large him, Luigi? He was, he was nice. Uh I, I I based his voice a bit on uh on Jim Cummings' Pete the Cat. Hmm. They said I sounded like Frank Reynolds, so. Well, Alex said that. Yeah, it was hard to keep a straight face. Everybody was laughing at my Danny DeVito beholder. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's tough. Like, I tried to do Scottish accents for some uh, half dwarf, half tabaxi. Mm hmm. So I just wanted them to be like tabaxi with like big bushy beards. Terriers. Yeah. <laughs> but cats. <laughs> Cat terriers. This is something you ought to tell TJ about. She'd be all over it. But you know, it's hard to do voices. Or like on episode last week, week before, when I was trying to do Liam Neeson. Mm hmm. There are certain subtleties you don't pick up on, but like I said, I many of them come from them for it. Establish, you know? Yeah. Uh, I I always do. There was a time where I finally said to multiple players, like, "Are you going to feel uncomfortable or pressured if I go big? Like, will it ruin the experience in any way for you if I just go hard ass on the characters?" And I said no, so I did it. Oh my god, there's a that. baseball cap here? <laughs> yeah. I am wearing a baseball cap in Jump King. <laughs> it's gonna okay. mess up your aerodynamics. Oh, I couldn't hear that. Um, Fashion is pain. Mm -hmm. Beauty is pain. Life is pain. Um, I, uh... I had a lot of fun with the Rock of Brawl, though. It's, it's definitely a great place to start if you're going to play Spelljammer. It's just like a little bit of a, a, a cheery Moss Eisley. Ooh, I like that. Like, it's, it's, it's your typical city structure where there's near the docks the poor people, then there's the middle people, then there's the rich people, and it's just on a one-mile one asteroid you were forbidden to uh, go to the bottom side. It's half of. My friend likes you. I like you, too. Yeah, yeah, just a little tweak. <laughs> uh, I can get down with that. <laughs> He's killed three men! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll be careful. You'll be dead! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's top notch D and D. You'll be honestly. scolded. Yeah. And I, I yeah. you know what's funny is that any anybody else in that sort of party in in Star Wars could have defused the situation, but Luke is the bitchiest little guy. <laughs> and so he had to be like, "My friend doesn't like you," and he's like, uh, "Sorry, <laughs> whatever." <laughs> He like, yes, we do have a right to be. a little pumpkin. Yeah. Well, the thing is, Hamill, whether he did it on purpose, honestly plays Luke like such a, a petty little teen kid. And, uh, I mean, I like that, but, it, you know, that's why he's like, oh, whatever. I'm allowed yeah. to be at the bar. <laughs> It's like, oh, it's not about what you're allowed to do, it's about what will cause someone to try to kill you. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, small fish, big pond. Mm-hmm. Well, the I, funny so thing it, is... it works! Mm-hmm. 
he's a talented pilot from the middle of nowhere. <laughs> what did Luke even do to his friend? It's one of my favorite. Sorry, we'll we'll get back to that. But my one of my favorite quotes from Star Wars is when C three PO asks Luke where they are. He says, "Well, if there's a bright spot at the center of the universe, then you're on the planet it's farthest from." <laughs> I've always liked that. So line. he just wants to get out of that small town. Mm-hmm. He's tired of living in that lonely world. Anyway, you were saying something about Luke. What did he do to his friend? What did he do, do to the guy's friend? Where he's like, my friend doesn't like you. Oh, nothing. Yeah, he walked, he sidled up to the bar in Mos Eisley. It was a, it was a terrible, dangerous bar, but... It literally, he literally walks up, I think he... nondescriptly orders a drink. Like, you don't hear him do it or anything. He just... At the guy. And then uh, the, the scary people in prosthetics attack him. They're only there because you need to know that the lightsaber will just slice off an arm like that. True, yeah. They're oh, real yeah, It's so weird to think about a time before the lightsaber was introduced. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's blood too, which is technically considered incorrect. Yeah, it's supposed to cauterize. Mm-hmm. He never changed that, which is kind of funny. Maybe there is blood and it just cauterizes, you know. And there's blood. Or it's force. It's not hot enough, but it's uh, other science bullshit. <laughs> well, it does cauterize it. And of course, uh, lightsabers don't use the force. No, they do. That's how they maintain their shape. Mm-mm. They're, uh, they're light filtered through special crystals. Hyper crystals. That's right. I've built my own lightsaber in Star Wars Coats of the Old Republic. Coats of the Old Republic. KOTOR. Knights of the Old Republic. Ooh. And you have to go out into the, like, with a wilderness and mine your choice of color and pick and, like, find the steel to form your choice of handle and stuff. It's a cool game. I never played it. I'm a big, big Star Wars nerd. It was made by Bioware just before they got massive with Mass Effect. They're on mm -hmm. sale right now. I bought um, one and two for like five dollars. Yeah, definitely a good time to pick them up. Uh, real quick, what's this archer getting for a magical or cursed item? I'm thinking um, some sort of influence on the arrows. Maybe they're cursed to, to always hit, but not the target they're aiming at. <laughs> so it could be the quiver itself that's cursed. Yeah. I was just going to say dancing sword, so. Dancing quiver. The quiver of mom said it's my turn with the bow. <laughs> oh, he has a mad cat's quiver. <laughs> <laughs> It always hits the target, but sometimes it's the right target. I have approximate knowledge of many things. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, no. You know how many screens a man can lose? It... Yeah, you can go all the way down. Uh... I wonder if there's a spot in the last jump where you could uh, theoretically fall all the way to the bottom. All the way to the beginning of the game. They could certainly rig it that way, because like, you can be bounced while falling, so you don't have to fall in a straight line at all. Yeah. They just they display that in the sewer, which the sewer does, if you fall into the main sewer through fair, uh, just dump you at the bottom of the sewer level. Because it's uh, there's no gravity. You know, it's slippery or whatever. Yeah. Do you have the DLC? Uh, I think I do, because I have the option Other Babes. Oh, nice. I don't know what that means, but... Uh, I mean, I know what the babes are, but... I mean, I know that there is a Smoking Hot Babe at the top, and that is why I'm climbing. What babe? Supposedly. There's a Smoking Hot Babe at the top of the mountain. <laughs> what mountain? 
the mountain with the smoking hot babe that is supposedly at the top of it. The mountain with the babe. Top of you do. Remind me. Remind me again. I'm sorry, what now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Voodoo. Oh. Voodoo. I, I barely knew to. Fuck. Well, <laughs> that's an old shame. man here. <laughs> I'm sorry? She probably has a great chest full of treasures <laughs> for me. Ho ho ho. <laughs> I'm playing Jump King. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I can believe that. Really? I have no reason to uh, say that. I'm just being difficult. How could you do that? How could you be difficult for me? You know that I am owed subservience. <laughs> this is the thing you know about me. <laughs> you know, I forget sometimes. I'm sorry. I owe you a, an apology. That so, explains everything. <laughs> we talked about uh, how I've been watching a lot of Always Sunny. And something that's my favorite in the show, other than like... I, I have to strongly disagree with like what a lot of people consider the core of the show, and even the cast at a certain point, I think, did. Which was like, oh, it's all shitty, and there's no heart, and there's no lessons, and whatever, you know? Um, but like ultimately, weirdly, what makes Sunny work is like sort of nice or weirdly healthy surprises from characters. Um, yeah. They, they have such unmitigated gall that they do occasionally stumble into the healthiest attitude uh, in a situation. My favorite example is uh, there's the episode where they get stuck in the closet in the house because they want to steal like a vase from some rich people. Mm -hmm. and the whole episode is about how Dennis and Peter stuck in the closet. That's wild card comes from. Uh, wild card's the gas crisis episode. It's the first time they do the wild card. Oh, uh, okay. Um, but they just the same van and... Uh, in this time, this one they're wearing hats, but that's because of Indiana Jones. Makes sense. Because it belongs in a museum. Um, but the point is, uh, he's in there with Dean. He's like, I know, uh, I, you know, I, I said that I was gonna, that I had a cat's grace and I was gonna slip in and out unnoticed. It was a great speech, but I regret it now. <laughs> <laughs> and he, they keep saying, you, you begged for us to, 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 you said you were gonna slip in and out like a cat. And he's like, yes, I know. It was a great speech, but I regret it now. <laughs> <laughs> and he, just, he just kept saying that. I'm like, you know what? That is, that's honestly, that's good communication. It's, it's healthy to let go of your past mistakes. I think he's right. I did say that. I was wrong. Yeah. But he only says it to shirk responsibility in the situation. Well, no, no. This is one of those situations where Dennis is right. I think one of the reasons they had to make him so crazy is because so often he's like, no, no, no. We don't need to be doing this. Like, that's sort of where the character naturally... This isn't who we are! <laughs> yeah, and it needs to be... He needs to not be a stick in the mud in a boring way. And so, you know, they, 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 they play up all this obsession and intensity. Because more often than any other character, he's got he's spot on about something. And it's not because like I like him most or agree with him most. It's just like, every once in a while, it's like, well, no, we can't be doing that. Just because of sort of his delivery is the kind of character an actor is. You have to have a, a sort of straight man. Mm -hmm. If anything, like at least one who's seeing a semblance of reason. Yeah. Otherwise, you lose the viewer entirely. And it's an interesting balance in Sunny because, generally speaking, what they do to do that is have somebody have bad or selfish reasons to have the correct or most acceptable take on something so that they can temporarily yeah, I mean, play straight man. There are even scenes where Charlie's a straight man. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, That's I why think... I think. Charlie work is one of my favorite episodes. Uh, the one with all the one shot uh, camera work. Yeah, mm, that's a really good one. Um, the, the there's so many of the newer episodes, and I, this is this only the second time I've watched past season uh, like thirteen. Um, and uh, there's so many episodes that I, I realize now are because people like had careers and stuff that they would rather be doing or like wanted to be doing and i don't mean it in a judgmental way but uh so there's tons of episodes where they split up for no reason or 
or they have to like finagle a reason that like for example uh, there's an episode where they go to the super bowl and charlie has a bottle episode that is shorter by himself before that episode because charlie day the real man was busy with something oh yeah that could have been one of a number of movies Mm -hmm. and um it's also why i think they do the texting episode at the zoo that's one of my favorite episodes probably of the whole series i just really like that one uh, I really liked also... uh, Max Play, which I think was the same season. Mm-hmm. Same season. It's a uh... yeah, yeah. It's it's a good one. Uh, the, 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 yeah, that's a controversial one within the community because it turns out there's tons of people who didn't realize the show was satire. Ah, uh... I honestly, you you see them sort of like make it more <laughs> getting rid of some of their subtlety. <laughs> Uh, in the later seasons to make it very clear. Oh, absolutely. And, uh... That happens with any show, though. Like... Well, I I mean, in this case, to make it very clear that they are are in the wrong and the bad guys, there's a lot more explicit, like, this is Mm. the bad tank moments. Like the gun episode. (laughs) Or one of them. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the 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 new the the best gun episode where 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 Frank's on the TV all the time and yeah. Anyway, he starts blasting the good one. I mean, they're both good in my opinion, but that's I think that's. Oh, that sounds very quotable. Yeah. You should try and, quoting uh, it. Okay. So anyway, I start blasting. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. Wow. Damn. Just. Just wow. This is the first time through I think I've really appreciated uh, D as much as I could. Did you? That wasn't me. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> Later than I anticipated it coming in. You, I, I fell exactly like I had hit the ground the moment you did that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "What the fuck? Are you are you, are you watching me now?" That'd be really funny. No, I'm working on my my uh, GIF Archer, who I think is good to go. Wow. Hell yeah. As much as our captain here is. Yep. So, I think we've got our captain, who is uh, Samuel Stormbane. Half orc, half uh, ASMR. Yeah. All but so does the ASMR thing in order to steal and pillage and plunder and seek the joys of life. That's a fun. Episode. And That's then uh, at his right hand is Strong Bowman, <laughs> the Gift <laughs> Archer. That is a huge bow. Who can hit anything? Yeah, it's a double longbow. It's a double longbow. I love it. <laughs> Plants it into the ground, Dark Souls style. Right. Doesn't Duh. need to. It has a big old gift body. It's true. Yeah, they 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 on the on the average size are seven foot tall. Wow. I wish. That's as tall as Big Cass from WWF. And that's a big ass. And of course, they're a. A sniper feet ranger but they right. got that quiver so, so watch out they can hit anything 600 feet away just not what they're aiming for <laughs> wind be damned that's fun we'll have to come back to this yeah i agree and i'll clean it up a bit in the in the downtime sure sure also Happy birthday, Joe, if you're out there. or Well, I know you're out there, but if you're listening. Happy birthday. I'll send you this card post-haste, bud. Hell yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's an episode. Sure is. We had So, to... happy birthday to everyone out there. Yeah. And God bless America. 